Hello, I'm Ed Raby, otherwise known as the Rabbit Atheist, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-atheist. Welcome to my channel. Feel free to like or dislike the video as you see fit, so feel free to hit those buttons. Feel free to comment below, and I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and hit your notification bell for more content as it is released. Uh, you've already read the thumbnail, you've already heard the title. Uh, the idea of this video is to kind of document how my attitudes towards music and my musical tastes changed over time from the time I did have faith until the time I didn't. Now, I'm not saying that mine is typical of what happens, but music, we have to start off first of all in the church. Music is a very powerful force. Uh, I think I did a, a video, which I'll link over my head, about how worship music is used in a service to initiate a certain emotional response. But it wasn't always during a service that sacred music, quote unquote sacred music, uh, had an effect on me. A lot of times that same music could be me just reading the lyrics of a hymn or singing it for myself. Um, over the years, music had a great, profound, personal effect as to why um, I stayed in the faith, why I came to faith. Um, I came to faith during the whole I Surrender All hymn, you know, All to Thee, My Precious Savior. Um, and then all those other you know, uh, kind of things that, you know, Billy Graham had popularized back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, it's that kind of music that drew me in. It's that kind of music that caused me to uh, change in a lot of heart and respect. Now, when you're a kid and you've had these people tell you that this message is true, and then you have music that kind of gets your emotions going, you kind of end up in that vein. Um, I think I had probably a definitive conversion experience at a vacation Bible school. Well, kids' music for kids is very simplistic, but it's very much going to reach into the heart. Um, as I grew older, uh, I became more of a contemporary Christian rock kind of kid, uh, which drove my pastor nuts because he hated it. And then I ended up, you know, kind of settling in that vein. But my musical upbringing, I, I think I have to thank my parents in some ways for keeping my horizons with music wide because my mother had been in the orchestra when she was in high school. And so... When I was growing up, I had a heavy diet of like Bach and Brahms and Beethoven and Mozart. I especially loved Mozart. Um, I still do. Every once in a while, I catch myself just you know throwing one of the symphonies on and just kicking back. But um, but as I grew older, I of course was influenced by my peers and the church. Um, Contemporary Christian music came into it, but my father's influence was more of Johnny Cash, uh, some of the real old country stars. And strangely enough, people ask me where my metal addiction came from. It was actually my father, although he doesn't really realize it. Now he's dead, so he'll never know. But he had a copy of Iron Butterflies in a Calvita, and I listened to it several times. And I was just like, I was fascinated by this rock stuff. And slowly but surely, I got into harder and harder things, stuff with, you know, more guitar and more metal. And by the time I hit high school, I remember going into high school as a Christian young man. And here, here's where the hypocrisy starts, I suppose. And I, did, I, I realized I was being hypocritical, but it wasn't a big deal because everybody else was. But I walked into my freshman year to high school at, and everywhere were Def Leppard Pyromania shirts, like everywhere. Like every third person was wearing one. And I think it, I think somebody said that there had been a concert like the week before. And so everybody who had gone to that concert had grabbed a shirt. And so they were everywhere. So I had never heard of them up to that point. I got a hold of their album, listened to it, loved it, loved the music, bought a copy of the album. I think I still have it somewhere. I'm not sure, but it's like, and that's what started the journey. You know, I listened to our pop, you know, I, I guess from my perspective, and this is purely opinion, but 
from my perspective, the 1980s had the best variety and the best quality of music because it's before MTV's visuals kind of ruined everything. Because a lot of this, a lot of the music was still really good. It's just certain performers shined and certain didn't because of how they looked on MTV, and some just stayed touring because they knew they could never make a video worth a shit. So we had that going on when I was in high school. At the same time, I had probably the largest collection of Christian rock that any of my friends had. I mean, I like literally had tons of cassette tapes of everything under the sun. And, you know, just from Petra to the Garmon Key to you name it, I probably had it, but I had a lot of like unknown metal bands like Messiah Prophet, uh, Baron Cross, a whole bunch of other ones. And when people ask me, did this have any effect on your faith as a young person? Yeah, sure. When you hear the music that you love played with lyrics that reinforce faith, that is a powerful combination. And I think when I look at modern worship music, I laugh because back then, that kind of modern music was decried as satanic. But you know what the church figured out? They figured out if they figured out how to modify, modify this type of music and put it in their services, they would keep people. They realized that they had to change the style of music in order to keep people. Now, my last church was a bunch of you know, older conventionalists that absolutely insisted on hymns and stuff. And that play, has a place, too, in my musical development, because I liked hymns, um, mostly because my parents sang them. Um, I still have fond memories of, of my uh, mother and father singing Learning to Lean, okay? Um, even though I don't agree with the theology anymore, I look at that moment of my parents, who were very loving and kind to me. Uh, I was never abused. Um, which is probably another reason why I stayed so long in the faith. I think when you're abused, you really begin to re rebel against whatever it is. You hate the music, you hate everything. But I, I didn't have that problem. And my father and mother, who were kind of, you know, the thing, that, the music that they both had in common was the 1950s doo-wop stuff that they both loved. And they would play that stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And I guess I became very eclectic in my musical taste. I was still mostly a metalhead, uh, and classical was probably second, and then every, there was a whole hodgepodge of stuff underneath that. As I got out into the ministry, the worship music was starting to get stronger and stronger. I remember I got into my first church, and 9-11 happened. And Hillsong, who I recently had a discussion with about on the preacher group that I belong to, ex-preacher group, uh, you know, they're having troubles now, but Hillsong sent us a free CD of some of their music uh, in response from Australia. And a lot of that music I just loved, incorporated it into my services, things like that, when I was with the Assemblies of God. So at that point, worship music got a little boost because a lot of people said, well, you know, it's just music, different types of music, different strokes for different folks. And I think that's that's something that began to be spoken a lot more. And for me, it was a welcome relief because in the 80s, I spent a constant amount of time fighting over stupid shit like whether or not, you know, Striper was Christian. And I'd be like, I don't really care. I like the music and the lyrics are good. Um, at the time, that's the way I thought. And so, you know, over time, but... The hypocrisy of my life at the time was I was also listening secretly in many times to bands like Metallica and Iron Maiden, and I would listen to uh, Megadeth, and I would listen to a lot of other bands like Def Leppard and Hurricane and a few others that were just hard rock. Uh, you know, thinking about all the different ones, you know, White Lion, you know, things that that were more that rock heavy metal hair metal kind of stuff europe a few others i mean I, I the list is very very long i was also listening to a lot of pop music and you know it, this is the era of michael jackson and madonna and prince 
and you know uh, the Talking Heads and all those guys, and just I listened to alternative and weird stuff too. And I was really broadening my horizons with the secular market, and so in the Christian realm, because I had to be selective, I was looking for bands that were like that. Uh, I think I Daniel Amos was a real good alternative band for me because they always spoke on stuff that was really close to my heart at the time because I always like to consider myself a very edgy Christian because I'm like, I don't really give a damn, you know, what your music is. You know, I don't care about all this superficial shit. And slowly but surely, that's the kind of minister I became. Uh, the Assemblies of God, I pastored two churches. My music was contemporary for the most part. I had to make a major shift uh, back to the hymns and more sacred type music, more high church stuff when I took my third church, which I didn't mind. I mean, I don't mind, didn't mind hymns at the time. Um, recently, very recently, like a couple weeks ago, my daughter posted my mother playing the piano and, and making the comment that this woman is literally a walking hymn book. I can open the book to any hymn and she can play it. And you know, it, there would be a temptation for me as a deconverted person realizing that the whole thing's kind of crap to look at a situation like that and go, well, yeah, it's all bullshit. But instead, I just listen to the music um, and took a lot of comfort that my mom can still play. Okay. I think when we're deconverting, we need to be very, very careful where we pick our battles I mean, if you're in a fundamentalist family that's giving you shit because you don't believe anymore, I understand distancing yourself away from them. But if you're in a loving family that just kind of considers you misguided or lost a little bit or leaves it alone, you know, that it's your decision, yeah, be very careful about your battles with them. You know, learn to have conversations with them. And music is actually a good way because music, I think, is very universal. A lot of us love music. A lot of us care about music, and we like to listen to music. I've met very few people that don't like music. And, um, you know, I've met a lot of people that only like one type of music or one artist, and everybody can go to hell. I didn't do that. Since deconverting, though, I have explored the multitude of realms of music. I still find myself coming back to certain genres like metal and hard rock and Discovering new bands like Disturbed and Hailstorm and uh, a few others, you know, just learning that there's other ways to use music to express the human condition other than just faith and religion. And I think that's been a great part of it and a wonderful part of my journey, and I, I appreciate it very, very much. I guess I'd be curious as to uh, what some of your thoughts are, or some of your histories are with music, uh, you know, between being in the faith and now you're out of it, okay? What has changed about music for you? And I think that's a, it's a good topic for discussion because music is largely a matter of opinion of what you like and dislike. And so, uh, you know, I just kind of uh, appreciate any thoughts on that because, you know, I realize that music is used during a worship service to generate a certain emotional response. I... A part of my reason that I kind of left the faith and no longer considered that evidence, experiential evidence, is I suddenly realized I could go to a secular concert and get the same emotional effect. And it's more about the music than the message. And uh, so I'm kind of curious, I guess, if other people had similar experiences or different ones than mine. I really appreciate every like, comment, and share that you give me. So, uh, you know, just you know, let me know what you think in the comments. And in the meantime, I hopefully convince you to be a rabid atheist like myself. In the meantime, this is Ed Raby, also known as the Rabbit Atheist, signing off and wishing you a good day.